Hello everyone, I'm Amos Central and welcome to episode 47 of Talking Buses. Once again we have a very action packed show for you today with all of the biggest headlines, all of your local fleet news, the simulation section, the back seat, the tracking buses and the weekly or the episodely photo competition. So a lot um, action packed into this show. So without further ado I'm going to pass you over to Gaz Doncaster who is going to be presenting this episode's National Industry News. Good evening everybody, I'm Gaz Doncaster and this week I'm presenting to you the National Industry News. So further ado, First Bus have announced their plans to upgrade a number of vehicles with the Allison XFE gearboxes, following findings that this would reduce fuel consumption on vehicles by an average of 8.5%, the operator are retrofitting these to 220 of their existing buses within the fleet. Within the Welsh capital, Cardiff Bus have received their first Utong E12 electric buses prior to launch on services this winter. 36 of these will arrive in total with varying liveries depending on services they are to be allocated on. These will be the first Utong vehicles with this operator. And finally, the government have released the UK local bus statistics for the period ending March 2021. Interesting figures with this include 32,600 buses used by local operators with 29% of these being in London, along with 88% having contactless payments enabled. Linking in with the push for electric buses, it also found that by March 2021, 52% of buses met Euro 6 standards, with 2% being zero emission. This latter figure expected to drastically rise during the current period. That is this week's National Industry News. I'm Gaz Doncaster, and it's back to Alex in the studio. Thank you for that, Gaz. Much appreciated as usual. It's quite interesting to see on the stats figures, obviously, when they did the review. Bearing in mind, it started in around March, April 2020 and went up to March 2021. That only 2% of all vehicles were zero emission. Obviously, in the past six to eight months, pretty much this year, we haven't stopped discussing the new electric bus orders for certain operators. So it will be very interesting to see how much that figure expands. Um, personally, my predictions are around it will be 8-10% to 10 of vehicles um, during the next sort of vehicle audit. As you've got to remember London as well, that have been, pre that have been purchasing electric buses left, right and centre recently. So now, without further ado, we're moving over to the National Network News, looking at all of the local bus service changes, the major ones, um, with the one and only Edward Fowler from the Edward Fowler Show. Thank you so much, Alex. It's great to be back here on Talking Buses again this week. I'm here to present the network news. Let's get right into it. Following a period of contracted operation, Halifax based services 514 and 532 will be returned to in house operation by Team Pennine from the 29th of November. These have been operated for a period by South Pennine Community Transport, whilst Team Pennine have been sought saft. Services around the Bradley area of Huzzerfield have returned to normal service following evening and Sunday roadworks around the Cooper Bridge area. For a number of weeks during evening and Sundays, work at this area closed this main road leading to the containment of services 202 and 203 at Marefield and the Lemfley diversion on the 229 bus route. This diversion used a low bridge and four single deck allocations on this route, with these vehicles also being used to provide an alloy shuttle between Huddersfield and Bradley on the days these works took place. And finally, over in Lancashire and Stagecoach recently upgraded their 59 bus service between Preston and Blackburn to, more, more, to one more frequently. This change uh, has gone previously unreported has seen uh, the frequency increase now from 30 to 20 minutes an extension as well to the uh, of the service to serve Blackburn Hospital to improve accessibility to the location that is your network news for this week I've been Edward Fowler I'm now going to send it back to Alex in the studio 
So that's all for part one of episode 47 of Talking Buses. Join us after the break in part two as we go for all of your local fleet news, um, including everywhere from um, South England all the way up to Scotland and everything in between. We'll go through the tracking buses section, the photo competition, the simulation section, and what should be quite a nice back seat for those of you who enjoy listening to vehicles. So join us in part two for all of that. So welcome to part two of episode 47 of Talking Buses with me and Mars Central. We're now moving over to the local fleet news section um, where we'll look at all of your local fleet news that has taken place. Usually in this bit my usual line will follow within the description below there is Google form. However due to the amount of information that we've got um, and the fact that next episode in two weeks time is going to be the last of this current series and um, we have closed entries for the local fleet news section at the moment and the entries I will express this at the end and what's happening with the entries when they'll reopen for the new series and um, but to ensure that obviously you guys aren't contributing stuff that isn't going to be seen um, for quite a while and um, we've decided to just play a catch up over um, this episode and episode 48 in order to make sure that those of you who already put your information in will hopefully get it read out um, and expressed and everybody will get told about it and get to know about it basically. So moving um, firstly over to Stagecoach South um, where Portsmouth based um, ALX400 Dennis Trident 18516 eight, uh, 18517 and 18518 have transferred to Chichester Depot. This now leaves ex London 40 should I say. Um, yeah that's one of the LY52s as the only ALX400 Dennis Trident in the Portsmouth fleet. Thank you to Gaming Hydraulics for that information. Staying with Stagecoach and going over to the Midlands and ADL E200 37060 has been painted into the new local livery and transferred to Nuneaton from Northampton Depot. ADL E200 um, at Lehman Spa that is 37179 has also been repainted into the new livery. Thank you to Nuneaton 777 for the information. Staying with the Midlands and going over to Diamond in the West Midlands and VDL SB120 Plaxton Centro 33009 um, has gone from Redditch to being withdrawn. Volvo B7 Arvely Optera Steam 30408 PO58 KPY has also been withdrawn from Redditch. A further example that has been withdrawn from Redditch as well is 30493 PO58 KPX. Alongside ADL, um, ADL Dennis Dart S11 Pointer 2 um, that is, oh I forgot, forgot my number, um, 30886, apologies about that, forgot where my number was, and 30886, KP54BYZ, that has been withdrawn from Tividale Depot. So this bus has been listed for sale um, on social media for 2500 plus VAT. So thank you to the Midget Man for the information. Moving down to Ensign Bus, and it's no um, sort of lie to anyone that the new 71 plate street decks have entered traffic there. Now to clarify for these vehicles and the registrations, um, these new 71 plate street decks are 168 all the way through to um, 181. So, and these are registered LX71 AOM AOB AOC D E G H J K N O P and LX71 AOR. So thank you to Adam the bus spotter for the information. Obviously some of the numbers and the regs don't come inside and um, so for further details do go and check their enthusiast page on their website. So Preston bus now um, part of Rotala now has 30862 and BU08 MTE from Diamond Bus Northwest painted in the Preston bus 2020 livery. Um, there is also a picture supplied with this um, that you can see now. So with this post there was no name put with it, however um, with the photography style um, and the fact that it's Preston Boss um, I'm going to thank Ryan Hack for that um, as an assumption that it was him who put it in. Um, so if it was you Ryan, um, thank you. So going back um, up north even more, um, we're going up to Edinburgh this time with Loving Buses where 926 and 927 and um, Gemini 2 B90Ls 
um, that have that have re-entered service after being VOR for quite some time. Thank you to FP's Transport Vids for the information. Staying in Scotland as well, and first Glasgow, just sort of the city next door, Dennis Trident, President 33120, has now sadly been withdrawn after 11 years of service there. It's the last of the Plaxton presidents um, that first Glasgow inherited from London over a decade ago, and with the rest being withdrawn as the new E400 MMCs arrived. 33120 was the last one to stay on. Um, it was a unique oddball being painted into the new first Glasgow livery for a future year or two additionally in use. And now that the LX400 Dennis Trident has been withdrawn, the LK53s, um, it was only a matter of time before that unique survivor was also withdrawn. It's a shame to see it go, um, but obviously it did quite well. Um, and it, it, it did um, first Glasgow incredibly proud. So staying with First Glasgow and McGill's um, E200 MMC 11.5 metres fleet numbers 4200 to 4214 have transferred to the Johnston Depot and 10.2 metre 4100 to 4110 have transferred to Greenock. GLA Bus Spotting, thank you for providing this, this information, has also supplied us a photo of one of these McGill MMCs that you can see now. So, going um, a bit further south again, back to um, sort of England and the Mersey, the Merseyside. And the first of the 10 new Wright Street lights at Arriva Merseyside Southport Depot are receiving to replace older vehicles arrived in early November 2021. It has the fleet number of 6006. Um, and from my from my understanding and the photos I've seen, it does have quite a unique interior. I believe it's been um, worked on with a Mersey Travel, um, who are partially funding the vehicles. Arriva Merseyside's Green Lane Depot are also going to re be receiving 24 Wright Street next in the coming months to again replace older vehicles. With the street lights assumed to be replacing commanders and the um, street decks assumed to be replacing vehicles like the ALX 400s. So moving a bit north again and going back over to Stagecoach to finish off this section, this episode. And Stagecoach Sunderland based Enviro 300 CNG 28029 has been repainted into the new local livery that now is running alongside 28007 and 28030 that are also in this livery. Deraid Foy, thank you for providing the information, who has once again provided us a photo of this vehicle that you can see now. So that's all for this episode's local fleet news. Again, as I say at the moment, the local fleet news section entries are closed. Um, there will be more details about when they are opening um, for the new series of Talking Buses once it starts early 2022 um, at the end of this video. Our theme for this episode's photo competition was electric buses in line with the COP26 conference in Glasgow. And we got some lovely entries. However, as usual, there can only be one winner, and this was Stephen McKinstry, with this lovely shot of a new zero-emission street deck on a show in Belfast City Centre. Congratulations for winning. Our runners-up for this episode were Optair 3, with the shot of a Voltra electric U-Tong charging in the depot, and Ernest Salmon, for this front door angle shot of Arriva London's EA4 on the 319 bus service. With episode 48 being the last in this current series, we wish to finish this year on a high and obviously around the Christmas theme. With our winter being with our theme <laughs> with our winter with our theme being winter and Christmas buses and coaches. So this can include um, your typical snow photos, it can include buses with Christmas decorations, or just photos of buses and coaches taken during the winter seasons of December, January and February. Please remember to read all the terms and conditions before entering. Good luck and happy snapping. So we're now moving on to tracking buses that this episode features Peterborough. Um, it was very much a matter of I took in all your suggestions and went around the map randomly um, and then found Peterborough. And then I believe one or two of you have suggested. So Peterborough itself is a place I've actually visited. Um, the reason I've visited Peterborough, like many other people in the bus industry, um, is because of this place, Whittlesea, where it's currently um, on Route 33, there's currently an E400 new to Peterborough, 
A10BXM, I believe it was definitely new to the um, East. Um, it might not necessarily be new to Peterborough, but definitely new to the East. 19599, that's currently sat in Whittlesea. Whittlesea being the base point for the Fenland Bus Fest that takes place during the early part of summer, late spring each year. Um, run by um, the sort of the enthusiast group, the Eastern Bus Enthusiast, EBE group. So if you haven't already, do go and check out their page. It is an absolute belter of an event, as it takes buses to places like Farnley, you go to Turves, um, and all around the area, really. And it is lovely around there with all the fens and things. So if we move a bit across, but we don't escape too much, you've got um, some more e 400 here. You've got another one on the 33. The 33, by the looks of it, um, half of them, um, ooh, yeah, all of them go through Whittlesea, that's the bus interchange point, um, and then there's a number of them that start at March as well. So there's also on the very, very, very board here, A56, um, in the branding of an interconnect, interconnect being based at Long Sutton. The 56 being an East Midlands service, and the rest of the routes around here being operated by Stagecoach East. So the 56 is sort of very much borderlining um, the last of those um, East Midlands services, very much on the edge like the 66 there. So going into the centre, and we're greeted by our hall host deliveries, primarily Stagecoach, who run your local services. They used to have quite a few um, ALX400 Dennis Tridents here, however they all transferred up to East Midlands. It seems to be the common trend at the moment, where the 400s around here are going to the East Midlands um, to replace all the Tridents there. And then you've got, again, sort of a lot of these E400s from the same batch, a lot of the E200s. But I'm not too interested in them. They used to have Dennis Starts, used to have ALX 300s here back in the day. Um, but I'm not interested in them. One thing I am interested in is this. On the 904 service. 21365. Um, that, like uh, many, um, is a Stagecoach East vehicle. Not based um, in Peterborough, it's based at Fen Stanston. On the 904 service. The 904 service um, running between... Um, St. Ives and Peterborough via Huntingdon replaced the old, um, I think it was Busway B service that used to run through to Peterborough that briefly used triaxle E400 MMCs. The 904 service isn't a busway route, however, as you can see today, it's got a um, BU69XXC, brand new B8R the MCV Avora, as they do have quite a lot of these. If we look at the Stagecoach East fleet, and we go on to these. You've got quite a lot of the, not as many of the Evora and bodied ones, but you've got quite a lot of the Eclipse 3 and Eclipse 2 bodied B8 and B7s. I and mean, they do have a lot of these that you can see end up on all sorts of services. It's like there is a, another Eclipse 3 on the 904 route um, as well. And you can see there's one of the B7 RLEs on the 30. So they do end up all over the place. Um, I imagine um, an Evora actually being on the 904 is a little rarer than um, other stuff. But still something very nice. And it's nice for something quite modern. Um, even though the route is no longer a busway service. So alongside that, um, as you can see, probably the more arterial routes out of Peterborough are the most interesting. You've got the Golds. Um, always believe in your soul. Um, is what I used to call them when I used to go on them um, up in South Yorkshire. So you've got um, some SK68, triple one thirty two, and this batch that are on the X4 service between Corby and Peterborough. Follow on from the ones that the X17 has um, in running from Matlock, Chesterfield, Sheffield and Barnsley. They follow on from that batch pretty much. And they operate the X4 service in between the occasional... Um, Scania that used to also appear on the service. So going round, um, we've got Delane as well. Um, Delane, an incredibly respected bus operator based in Bond. They have their own transport museum. Um, they've got all sorts of vehicles, all on pri all on their own personal private edges, um, reflecting their age as well. So it's like all seven that be sort of two thousand and seven, and B ninety L Optair Olympus um, that today is on the one hundred one service. And they run quite a lot of buses do the lane. They run a lot more than you expect. Quite a lot do go into Peterborough. However, there is also a few that don't. Go around Spalding, Stamford. Um, so they do have a lot. Um, they've obviously got the 
lovely MMCs um, and this one, the brand new 71 reg that today is on a Peterborough service. They retro sort of fit their vehicles, so it's like the um, Gemini 3s that they have, um, have sort of retro windows. They have retro seating as well on them and retro seat pockets. that's very nice. Um, does all that add to the effects and I definitely at some point need to spend the day in the delaying world just to see what it's like and sample a few of their buses because believe it or not it's something I'm yet to do. So if we zoom in our final sort of one of the main arterial services is the one and only Excel route that recently um, got upgraded um, to using Scania N250 UD E400 cities very similar to the ones that are used in Bristol. So the the service um sort of the Excels um was split into different head codes instead of all being the X1 like they used to be and they were split into A, B and C. A, B and C are all taking different routes. So it's like if we look at this on C, C takes a different route um along different sections. There's quite a lot of C's actually on here. Um and then if we try and find one, I believe there's one over here on the B or the A. The A, oh goodness, okay. The A takes again a slightly different route in sections. However, if you look at this, this shows where your different routes vary. So there's variations on if routes are expressed or not, if routes call into certain places. I and mean, this is quite a nice and sum up of what everything looks like. It's quite a big service run by First Eastern Counties. It used to go all the way to Great Yarmouth, however it has been split into two at that point with the X1 then prefix number still being used in the Great Yarmouth section. So it is an arterial service, uses quite a lot of vehicles. Today um, everything's correctly allocated, however sometimes um, you do get incorrect allocations, so you can get B90 or Gemini 2s. Um, even some of the X leads and X Olympic Games examples uh, appear on it from time to time. So it's quite an arterial service. Again, one I do wish to travel on um, at some point. And if we do have a little look, um, it is quite a long bus service. So if you set off at 12 o'clock from Norwich, it takes you about 3 hours and 15 minutes to get to Peterborough. Um, and that's one of the more express services. So it is quite an extensive route. Um, I mean, the it's sort of set off by the looks of it. There's a 40 gap, then a 20 gap. Um, but they are half hourly off Peterborough. Um, that is pretty cool. So yeah, um, as I say, Peterborough is quite an interesting place. I would recommend it more as your arterial services, the ones that go out of the city rather than spending time in the city. But apart from that, it's got quite a few interesting operators and is definitely worth a visit down to have a look at. So that's all for this episode's Tracking Buses. We begin our look in the simulation world with ex Lisa underscore 14, who has sent in some screenshots from the Yorkshire and Coast map in Roblox. This project um, looks like it takes inspiration from Stagecoach in the Lakes with the branding on the vehicles and is looking good so far. Moving on to another new project in the Roblox world, this time by Jacob's Things, who has sent in some screenshots from their new Penton City bus simulator. This game is still a heavy work in progress, but has a nice basic number of buses and areas so far. And finally, over in Coast and Country Busing by the one and only I'm a King Slayer, um, work has continued on the brands with the following changes taking place. These are the new Brexham Brisker Volvo Beat and Beer Leaf for the 38, new Stanley Swifter Scania Omni City for the 25, New Mini Optair Solo Cathedral Bus for the 40 as it does run in real life in Durham and new Seasider B90L for the X12 service. So that's all for episode 47 of Talking Bus and I do hope you've all enjoyed it. Thank you to my co-hosts Gaz Doncaster and Edward Fowler for doing a superb job as usual and everybody who took part in contributing to the different sections of the show. Now as I did mention earlier um, with episode 48 um, that will be two weeks time after this um, nearing Christmas and um, being the last of the current series we will be returning with Talking Buses um, in next year, the back end of winter 2022, so basically February and um, there's going to be more details of that in next episode um, of the actual date when we're returning so make sure you watch that episode um, and don't miss it. 
Um, with that in mind, and with the end of the series in mind, we do have a backlog on a few of the entry areas. A few of you will have noticed it's taken a few more episodes than usual um, for me to get round to your local fleet news and other things. Um, so the decision has been taken already um, to close the entries for the local fleet news so that in next episode we can just catch up on the stuff that's already been sent in. So everything that you've contributed will hopefully get shown and without anybody sending in anything that may not get featured. With that in mind as well, the weekly or the, the episode lead photo competition will close at its usual time on the Wednesday before the Friday, so two days before episode 48 goes live. That's when the photo competition closes as usual for judging. However, the simulation section will also close the Monday of that week. So if you do have any simulation section projects that you do wish to show us um, in the final episode, episode 48, that will close the Monday before the episode, so that's four days before episode 48 of Talking Buses goes live, so do make sure you send in your entries and your stuff, your contributions that you'd like us to show for that. The reason we're closing these over this period, it's a decision and we've made, is so that obviously you guys don't send in stuff that may not get featured. It's also, in, it's also to ensure that we don't get too much of a backlog um, for when we start again. All of these sites um, in next episode, it will I'll reveal what day um, the um, Talking Bosses, the new series is here um, in 2022. Um, as I say, it will be February, March time, yet to be confirmed. It will be confirmed in the next episode. Um, I will also, um, the new these fault competitions, um, the simulation section and the local fleet news, those areas to contribute will reopen two weeks before the new first episode, episode 49 of that new series will go live. There'll be information of this on the community tab. There'll be information of this in the next episode. Um, but do bear in mind, if you do want to contribute um, to them sections for the new series starting in February, March, um, all these sections will reopen two weeks before that new series begins. So do be aware, do not worry um, if you haven't managed to put your local fleet news in um, for this this episode or the next one, um, because episode, not, episode 49, although we are taking a little break, isn't that far away. With that in mind, though, we're going to move over to the back seat now that is Preserved United Livery Leyland Olympian ECW 251, registered B251NVN. Um, a lovely, nice Olympian for those of you who do love the type. So if you have enjoyed this video, do be sure to hit that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you are new to the channel, hello and welcome. For more content like this, um, both from the um, real life bus industry as well as the simulation section in the transport world, do be sure to subscribe to the Ammar Central YouTube channel. Again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, do make sure you tune in for episode 48. That will be a bit of an exciting one um, to end off this current series. And I will see you all in the next video I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.